what's up, guys? Welcome to We Sam's World. Michael, how you doing today, man? Thumbs up. Thumbs up from Michael. Yep. I love him. He's my he's my guy. <laughs> Our guest today is my fellow co-star on For the People, Ray Gage on Page, who plays Leonard Knox. I had such an amazing conversation with Leonard today. We we went through the whole spectrum of emotions, I feel like, in this conversation. We we laughed. We got teary eyed. We got really serious. And it was just it was just full of color today. And I, I, I really appreciate him. I love how comfortable I am talking with him. And we disagreed on a couple of things, which was great because I love disagreeing with people and we're not trying to kill each other afterwards. And it was a nice, wonderful uh, discourse, right? Discourse? Is that the word I'm using? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, please welcome the cool reggae John Page. Ah. <laughs> da -na. I didn't, I didn't da -na 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 -na. used into the show like this. <laughs> Reggae. Jean Page. Jean. Jean, Jean Page. Page. Whatever. I already messed it up. I mean, I don't know how to say your name properly either. This is, We can have name wars on that one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I called you out this morning. You did. You did. You were a horrible, horrible person early in the morning. <laughs> And uh, you showed me up. You I, did the 100? 100, 100 push-ups. I, I did do the 100. I mean, the worst thing is that I had to do half of them one-handed so I could figure out how the fuck to record it on Instagram right. and do push-ups at the same time. So I'm lopsided. I have one boob much bigger than the other this right. morning. I um, can tell. Because of you. Um, I know. You've been staring at them for a while. It's been making me uncomfortable. Um, I will be reporting you, reporting you to HR. Uh, well, we're done filming, sir. So, <laughs> so the HR department can't save me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> There's a lock on this door. There Fuck. it is. <clears throat> oh, those are bulletproof windows, sir. Um, dude. Bullet. God damn, this country has guns. <laughs> right. Um, I wish we had more scenes together this uh, season. More, more than the, I, I, I mean, spoilers, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me I too. mean, I can't wait. I, th I, I mean, they will happen. If there is one incentive for people to keep watching this show, there is one. It is that when Leonard and Jay meet, it's 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 a special time. I feel like you're gonna throw him around like a rag doll in the beginning. Um, I mean, a, a rag doll would be generous to yourself. Oof, <laughs> oof, <laughs> oof. <laughs> but Jay's not gonna give up. No, Jay's 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 like a he's like a squirrel. Did you know? Fun fact: Please. squirrels apparently, yeah. and someone can snipes me on this. Apparently, squirrels, or maybe it's a certain breed of squirrel, cannot release their jaws until their teeth meet. Which is why you don't want to be bitten by a squirrel. Whoa, 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 like it's whoa, like whoa, an whoa. instinctive thing, like you know, like kind of you know instincts kind of yeah. basic spine type shit. They can't really if they bite something, they can't release their jaw, like they can't release the muscle until the teeth meet. Whoa! So how, how do you know that, sir? I don't know. Like I read it somewhere, and yeah. I was like, "That's a cool one. I'm gonna keep that. That's something I can work into a terribly deep metaphor one day or something." What is it about? Like we know, like if mm. between you and a squirrel. Strength-wise, obviously, yeah. you'd kill it, right? I wanted to know which way you were going to go with, obviously. You'd kill though. a I squirrel. Mean, after this morning's push-ups, maybe. But mm -hmm. if a squirrel charged at you... You'd fucking run. Oh, you'd be scared Damn out of straight. your mind. Damn straight. Isn't that funny how yeah, we are? Yeah, but I don't think that's funny. I think that actually makes sense because the squirrel's got nothing to lose. The squirrel knows it's there to lose, and so it's just going to do as much damage as it possibly can. Whereas you, yeah. you because you know you... You expect to win. You expect to survive this encounter. Right. You want to survive, you know, like with your face intact. The squirrel, he's not playing by those rules. The squirrel's just here to fuck some shit up before he goes. How much awareness do you think a squirrel has? A lot. You ever watch those things? Yeah. Like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> they're twitching. They're tweakers. They're, they're acorn tweakers. Isn't it funny how some animals have more self-awareness than others? Like you could tell, like, there's a lot going on. With a squirrel, like thinking wise. Can I wise. clarify that we're not stoned this morning? We're we not. We started talking about squirrels and we're all in one. I like these kind of conversations. Oh, I love them. Because but there's some animals, like even dogs. I love <laughs> dogs. But some dogs, you're I like, is there, is there anything going on behind those <laughs> eyes, sir? <laughs> no, this is the joy of dogs. 
that there really isn't dogs. Dogs are a little bit like what everyone tries to teach you in improv class, where they're just there, ready to receive. It's mm. like, what's going on? What's going on? Are yes. we sad? Are we sad? Oh, we're sad. Oh, we're sad. Oh, my God, we're sad. Wait, but now we're happy. We're happy now? Why are we happy? I don't fucking care. I'm just happy with you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. dogs are... Dogs are the best for that. They're just literally ready to receive whatever fucking emotion you throw right, out. They'll just right. take it on, embody it, and roll with it until you change it up. But like insects, friend. Insects. Yeah. So in, it's in, almost in like they're like ro- robots. Insects. Insects. What, I, what, what did I say? Incest? No. no what? <laughs> I said insects. Like uh, insects. Like, you don't hit that second T. You're literally saying in the act of coitus. Insects. Insects. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Enunciate, we said. Uh, well, they're just very different things. They're very different things. They're like tiny robots almost. Insects? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're unreadable. Right? Mm-hmm. But a spider, immediately we, a majority of people not freak a lens out. on an insect, but yes. Uh, all right. You know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Wait, scorpions are not insects, right? You made me do push-ups this morning. I'm going to be a dick all day. You know what? I love that we bust each other's balls all the time. Me too. It's, it's a brotherly thing. And I think it's an honesty thing that we feel that comfortable around each other. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's a very, it's a language. You need a language with each person. Ours is abuse. <laughs> right. Um, and that's, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that too. And we I have, have so much fun. Somewhere. Oh God, we don't have a safe word. <laughs> we, we, we don't. It just gets quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it gets real quiet. It's just like, okay, after oh. now, please. <laughs> oh, are they for real? <laughs> and, then we, and then we just walk our separate ways. <laughs> If we can still walk. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. Um, I'm so glad how positively the show has been received. Yep, did I? And uh, people are realizing one of the best compliments I got, and mm. it's what the show is. They they can't describe it to any other law show they've seen, which I love. Yeah, that's, that's a huge positive. Um, and I think, uh, oddly enough, secretly, because this is more of a law show than any law show I've seen, in that, like, yes, there's lots of sexy, scandalous things going on, but also there's a hell of a lot more law than I've seen in a law show for a while. Right. Like, there's a lot of, it's it's the secret geek show, man. Like, suddenly I understand process and how dramatic process can be. And then more importantly, how that process is run by dramatic people. Like, it's young people like you and me, like, actually like you and me, who don't know what on earth is going on, but know that it needs to happen anyway. Trial by fire. Absolutely. Absolutely trial by trial by fire and trial. Exactly. Uh, I know you're a citizen of the world, sir. Uh, <laughs> but have you ever gone into a or signed up for jury duty? No, no, okay. that's that's never crossed my path. Being <clears throat> inside a real courthouse, yeah. The energy in there. Yeah. If you're sensitive to that kind of stuff, oh my mm. gosh, it is. It's not f- like warm <laughs> to yeah. say the least yep. it's very an- there's lots of anxiety in the air of course i mean I, i'm guessing there's almost like li- there are literal pheromone anxiety like anxiety pheromones just bouncing off the walls oh yeah i bet and all day long and the people there the majority of them that's probably like their worst day of their lives usually yeah absolutely um until uh, possibly when you reach a resolution and there are certain people in the court where it's the best day absolutely you know well yes. hopefully not the best day I mean, hopefully it's a good one but you do better than simply reaching relief of justice yeah but, um yeah no i think the one of the things that's so powerful about it is that you reach those extremes of not just emotion but human experience like these are literally the most extreme achievements or pitfalls of our existence in these rooms right um, and of course that puts off a vibe. It's it's fast. I mean, I'm I'm warped in this way. You were saying it's not warm, and it's not. But I was so drawn to it. Like I kind of sat yeah. down and went, "Holy shit, I'm in church." Well, it's the pinnacle, yeah. I think, of civilized society. If you really think about it, of what it's capable mm-hmm. of in terms of uh, morality, because those laws are basically created by humans mm-hmm. to structure. The morality of that tribe, quote unquote, I think or country. It's, it's certainly um, an inspiring ideal of where we want the pinnacle to be. I, I'd hesitate to give it the, the mantle of pinnacle already because there is so much improvement that can be given. Do you see what I mean? Uh, yes, but when I say it's the pinnacle, yeah. it doesn't mean that it's a high pinnacle. <laughs> you know it's what I'm talking about? It's a cynical pinnacle. Yeah, but yeah. no, you, you, you phrased mm. it in a very interesting way as, as well. Oh, shit. Um, I mean, look at like if we, uh, if I'm not mistaken, some of the first like actual 
trials in mm-hmm. terms of like a democracy yep. where back yep. in uh, Greek, old ancient Greek times uh-huh. like Plato, Aristotle, mm-hmm. Socrates, that kind of time period. And I think whenever you start building civilization around like, no, these are the things you can't do or mm-hmm. you will be punished by the tribe. That's basically yeah. what I feel I mean, like the legal system is, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, to be pedantic, those are certainly the earliest uh, trials that our Western civilization is aware of and built on and that's included in our history. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm almost certain that outside of our knowledge, you'll have very similar things further to the east, further right. to the south. Um, I'm just always very, very aware of when we frame history in a very kind of um, uh, Western-centric way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. You know I mean? Yes. Uh, but certainly, we're... yes, it's the birth of the kind of uh, Anglo-centric world's justice system. Right. Uh, I mean, if you look at what? The ancient uh, Chinese empires, the yeah, dynasties that, that went I through mean, there. We don't even... Yes, they had trials there, of mm. course. Uh, if you look at the Confucius way, uh, the philosophy of that, a lot of the trials in that time period were, were put around uh, the Confucius way of thinking, you know what I mean? That yeah, kind yeah. of philosophy. But... That being said, mm. if you look at Confucius and if you look at like Socrates and Plato and Aristotle, let's just take oh. those two examples yeah. from those yeah. two small yeah, yeah, sections yeah. of the world. <laughs> it's very similar. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And that's In exactly the morality. point I'm making. That's yeah, exactly okay. the point Great. I'm making. Okay. That this sophistication and this um, ideology has existed uh, to our knowledge, actually, if we examine our knowledge, pretty much universally. From right. very, very, very far back, we have had this desire to sophisticate ourselves and find ways of uh, developing ourselves and overcoming our disputes with some kind of regulation um, that is more than merely chaos and battle. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And yet it's still adversarial. It's almost like it's, it's in, our, in our makeup that we have to fight over this, but we have to, the more rules we layer over the fight, the closer we think we come to sophistication, which may or may not be true. I don't think so. I think it starts with the individual, and mm-hmm. it, has to be, it has to start with individuals. Um, I, I'm sca- Here's one of my biggest fears. Mm-hmm. Mobs. Mob Mo- mentality. Mobs. Okay, yeah. So as in groups of people as opposed to mafia. Uh, yes, not the actual, yeah. the mob, but yeah. uh, mob mentality yeah. specifically. Absolutely. Because all of a sudden, you get this group of people, I mean, you mm-hmm. see, can see it online, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's not run by reason, you it's, it's to run no by FX? reaction. Do you ever listen to NoFX, the band? Yeah. You aware of The Decline? No. Uh, it's this one 15, 16 minute song they wrote. Um, which is insane, and I used to hate it, and it's now one of my favorite songs of all time. Um, and it's just really, really good. Um, and just this, there's this really simple line somewhere in the middle, this idea that um, a million people are smart, smarter than one. Um, and that's essentially what mob mentality and how democracy badly applied ends up. Yeah. This idea that the simple idea of numbers implies uh, both morality and intelligence, which often is the exact inverse. You know, mm-hmm. like the, mm-hmm. the, the million, the, the minute an idea reaches a million people and they can agree on it, it's probably not that great an idea. Okay, here's my example. Yes. Uh, you're you're um, on the council of Ben and Jerry's, right? They have a great big evil council somewhere on an island. They're Bond villains. Right. Um, <laughs> and they're, they're, they're spitballing their new flavor of ice cream. Yeah. The only flavor every single person on that 48 person panel is going to agree on is vanilla. Do you see what I mean? Like mm. if you make ice cream by, by committee, vanilla will be the flavor you come out with. Cherry Garcia, four people are going to love it. And the rest of the council is going to be like, uh, you know, I kind of like it. This guy's going to hate it. The one that everyone's going to be like, you know what? We can all agree on this shit, vanilla. And that is easily the least interesting flavor of ice cream. Mm-hmm. It's not the ice cream that's going to push you forward. It's not the ice cream that's going to um, get your heart racing because you love it so much. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like basically the simplest and most basic answer is what's going to sustain the group. Yeah. Into um, the next step it was, slowly. It was just a really pretentious way of saying lowest common denominator. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I, I, I like that example yeah. a lot. And But, man... Um, also, like really going back like to Plato Garcia. and Aristotle, they said a yeah. democracy doesn't work whenever the population mm-hmm. is uneducated or they become yeah, ignorant or stupid. And that's that's becoming, I think, a big issue right now. Where oh, I think it's become a big issue a long time ago. Agreed. Um, it's become a it, it's been a big issue because mm-hmm. um, you can't have discourse anymore. Now, we're going to talk mm. about something here yep. in a little bit, the coffee grinder, <laughs> which <laughs> me and Reggae were talking about something a little outside. And I go, oh, I disagree with you. And I'm excited because yeah. we can actually yeah. converse about it. Dude, and I, I love can, disagreeing. It's the best. And I can't wait. And I'm just going to jump into it. So 
Mm. Let's let's start with what we were. What was the initial conversation about? Um, oh, so we were talking about um, things that kind of get to us a little bit uh, with journalists because uh, in our do- in our jobs as public, fig- <laughs> public Pu- figures, public figures. <laughs> That is so true. <laughs> As occasionally public figures, um, we deal with journalists a lot um, who ask us questions about ourselves. And a lot of these times, these questions are rituals. They're contrivances that we both understand, where the journalist is not actually asking you what the show is about. They know what the show is about. They go, they're saying, here's your platform. Do this thing where you stand up and you tell people what the show is about and get some airtime so they know your face and your brand. Right. Like, that's what's actually being said. Um, and there are various kind of, I don't know, weird annoyances with how you deal with that right. ritual mentally. Um, and we Sam was getting uh, a little heated up about essentially the quality of journalism sometimes and just how much care is put into that. Yes. Um, because I know, for instance, in the past that there was a time when I got um, uh, uh, pulled up a little bit by a journalist who was getting annoyed where she asked me a question. Um, and she was like, yes, I know. You said you gave that answer in this other interview I've read. And I'm like, yeah, because they asked me the same question. The answer's the same. So either I'm going to lie to you to make your interview special and unique, or you need to ask me a question that they didn't ask me because the answer's the same. I'm the same person. It's right. the same answer. It's not um, years uh, ago <laughs> that I answered this question. also, yeah. depending on the question, years ago, still the same answer. It might be. <laughs> you know I mean? It might be. Yeah, right. Um, and so, and so I was saying that I do also have some compassion for that, though, because occasionally, especially as we are minor public figures, <laughs> um, I don't necessarily give myself a position of being special in this person's day. You know, it's a bit like I'm, I'm a job to, to a lot of people who talk to me. Like, it, I imagine if you work in Starbucks, right? Like, we've all worked in service jobs. Um, it's, you know, it's your job to make good coffee. I mean, we're going to debate this another time about Starbucks coffee. But that's not the point. It's your job to make good coffee. And if you're making your 25th coffee of the day on day 295 of working in Starbucks, your heart and soul is not in Dave's latte. It's just not. Um, you know, you're making a coffee, you get through it. You do the bare minimum. Like, that'll happen. And so I can understand when I'm the bare minimum. Like, I'm that thing you have to do in the middle of the day. I'm Dave's latte. You know, I'm latte number 20 out of 45 you got to make. And I can forgive you if we just got to go through the, the process of the thing. I'm not expecting you to bring the world to me. And this oh, I is so disagree, disagree with that. <laughs> I so disagree with that, man. Mm. And this is why. There's a term that I love. Mm-hmm. Unmitigated daily discipline in everything you do. Mm-hmm. I love that phrase by Jocko Willink, which I'm going to bring him up on the show. Oh. Please and expand upon that phrase because I think so, I already have my interjection ready. <laughs> This life that we live, Mm -hmm. I find it to be extremely precious. I literally find it every minute, every second, every day is precious. Mm -hmm. And it's ticking away. Yeah, I'm going to expire soon. You're going to expire soon. Uh, That soon will come. I'm realizing every year of my life goes by quicker than the last year. Oh, yeah. And you don't don't have a guarantee on that. This ceiling could fall in. You know, there could be something wrong with this wiring and we go in the next 20 seconds, especially with microphones around, by the way. I've been shocked off microphones so many times in my life. Right. So, yes, I worked as a server. Mm-hmm. My parents owned a restaurant, too. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And I realized working as a server, mm-hmm. uh, working in the restaurant, yes, there were days where I phoned it in. There yep. were days where I didn't care if they got their food or not. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my yeah. life. However, looking back on it now, mm-hmm. I found the days where I actually cared mm-hmm. and I actually put in the effort, even yeah. when I was tired, mm-hmm. I benefited more greatly. And I wound up being more mentally energized mm-hmm. than the days I would just be negative and phone it in. See, now I 100% agree with you, except for I think you might have a different experience if you had managed to do that every single day because there is a cumulative fatigue. There is something about what you said at the beginning, that this life is precious and every second of it is precious. Every millisecond of it is precious. Every nanosecond. Right. Now, if you were to cognitively, consciously try to hold that in your head for every millisecond and nanosecond of your life, you'd be exhausted by the end of the day. And so there is such a thing as self-care in that situation where you might... Okay, it's a bit like... Say you got to run a marathon, right? Yeah. you got to run a marathon. 
And like every step of that marathon is precious. Right. Every step of that marathon to win it, you could be making more effort. If you sprint for the first 500 meters of a marathon, uh, you're going down. I, that's, that's where I think I should clarify more. It's mm -hmm. not about sprinting. It's not about you're, you're going, hey, you want a Dr. Pepper? You got it. <laughs> Do you know? What I mean? <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. It's not that. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a conscious effort. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And yeah, let's say you have been working a job mm -hmm. at Starbucks. Yeah. Just, uh, that's the example for six mm -hmm. years. And you're out wanting to be an actor or an artist of some kind. Mm -hmm. That's a classic example, right? Yep, 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 yep. If you're working in the same place for six or seven years mm -hmm. and you've made no headway as an artist mm -hmm. and you haven't like reflected on that, mm -hmm. that's a, even a bigger problem. Yeah, but see, I'm not saying that. Okay, let's give our server a name. Let's say Julian, right? Yeah. I'm not saying Julian isn't reflecting on Dave's bad latte. I'm just saying that Julian's hitting a minimum to get through the day. Julian is pacing themselves. I'm not saying the latte is like, you know, undrinkable. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm curious to know what your what your definition of pacing themselves is then. Um, I think that, uh, so where I trained um, as an actor is notoriously intense. Um, and generally they expect a certain percentage of the class to drop out before they complete the three years. Great. Um, it's It used to be known as the trauma center because like they used to really mess people up. Um, or people used to get messed up. There's six at one and half a dozen at the other. Um, and I learned, part of what I learned during that experience was pacing. There's a temptation to try and go all out, to give everything every day. And you do, but burnout is a real thing. Um, and there's something about setting a standard which is legitimate and uh, the unrealistic expectation of being able to sprint 24-7. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> oh my gosh i literally i i i understand in terms of like the pacing pacing yeah, yeah. but there's something in me that is like, like i'm not saying you get to walk through the marathon see what i'm saying okay <laughs> fair you don't get to walk right okay but you also don't get to beat yourself up for jogging no, and they, of course, but there has to be a kind of thing where I feel like, especially in today's society, mm -hmm. and I, I think I think Western society in, in particular, we're we're okay with giving people um, like the participation trophy, yeah, 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 yeah. which I'm not a fan of. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so what happens is when it's like, hey, don't beat yourself. Oddly up. enough, I've definitely seen. I could definitely draw a line. I mean, we might debate this or not between um, first, second, and third generation immigrant communities and the dislike of the participation matter. right um but we might get into that no 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 time. it's all good yeah yeah, yeah 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 no but do you see what i'm saying like mm -hmm. um oh man I, I hope i didn't lose my train of thought uh participation medals uh today's uh, society yes okay mm -hmm. i feel it's so easy because this yeah. is a weakness of mine mm -hmm. if i go you know what we sam like this morning yeah I, I wasn't planning on running the mountain did you know that I woke up. I assume you're not planning on running the mountain every morning. I woke up and I was like, it's 5.15. Just Can you how epic that sounds for a second, by the way? I wasn't planning on running the mountain. And then I did. And the mountain ran. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Make your life sound as epic as you want, Wee Sam. Go ahead. But you know what? I was, I, was, I was just laying there in bed and I go, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. I'm wide awake right now. Am I going to go back to bed and do mm. what? Sleep some more? Nah. I think sleep is hugely underrated. Nah. <laughs> Gonna go <laughs> run a mountain. Gonna go uphill before the sun yeah. gets up. Uh -huh. And that kind of like aggressive, like default mm -hmm. aggressive attitude. Yep. I found success in my daily life, mm -hmm. in my acting career. Whenever I've gotten a self-tape audition, I yep. go, awesome, canceling everything I have until yep. I finish that right yes. now. And so I think that you and I are agreeing in different ways um, because the, the difference is that I see twin dangers. I see the danger of oversleeping, um, which is what I think you're addressing. Um, but then I also, which is, you know, almost at epidemic proportions because our lives are so goddamn comfortable right now. But I also see the danger the other way um, of, this isn't it directly what I mean, um, but psychopathy. There's a certain What's American that? psychopathy. What is that? Like being a psycho. Oh. Like, so this American psycho, right? Christian yeah. Bale. This is a nice archetype that they created for us there. Where there was, um, there was a, a couple of years ago when I remember Nightcrawler came out and I think maybe Wolf of Wall Street came out in the same year. And there was another one. 
there was another like big movie that year. And to my mind, I drew the link between all of them was they were about hyper-masculine American psychopathy, about men who, that, who take that extreme of turn everything off, this is the thing I'm doing, hyper-focused to the expense of all other things, to the expense of their humanity, to the expense... Yes, to I, mean? I see what and you're I saying And I think that now. that is a very, very real danger because yes. it is presented so often as aspirational. Do you Fair. see what I mean? Fair. There is a balance. Um, and I think that there is, uh, without getting too dramatic about it, um, close to epidemic proportion problems on both sides of that. Like, if this is the sweet spot right here, down here is sleeping too much, and over here is becoming a fucking psychopath. Do you see what I mean? Both of those sides are dangerous, and I fear this side more because it's presented as aspirational so often, particularly in the American zeitgeist. You are absolutely correct. And I, yes, I think we we agree. We're just saying mm. the different, different things. Yeah. And I think maybe both of us lean towards a side more than the other. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely leave, lean more towards go get it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody of course. And, that's, you. and that, that can well be a noble thing. So I have probably bought, I don't even know how many of these books, at least 15 of copies of Extreme Ownership, How U.S. Navy Seals Lead and Win by, lead and win by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. Mm -hmm. And I just gifted this to my team. And... <clears throat> In the last chapter, it calls it calls, talks about the dichotomy of leadership, mm -hmm. and there's a nice balance to it. And it says a good leader must be confident but not cocky, mm -hmm. courageous but not foolhardy, competitive but a gracious loser, attentive to details but not obsessed by them, yep. strong but have endurance, a leader and follower, humble, not passive, aggressive, not overbearing, quiet, not silent, calm but not robotic, Logical, but not devoid of emotions. Close with the troops, but not so close that one becomes more important than another or more important than the good of the team. Not so close that they, that they forget who is in charge. Able to execute extreme ownership while exercising decentralized command. I mean, that's, that's an apostle's creed of, of the army, isn't it? Uh, it's, it, it's, it's brilliant. It's almost unachievable, but it's a wonderful ideology. It's beautiful. It is, and I think... That's where the unmitigated da daily discipline in your daily life. Yes. And that's where it comes. And he's come up with the phrase, discipline equals freedom. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you there. I think um, I want to link this in to something a little bit wider, but I want you to finish first. I don't want to cut you off. No, no. I was just saying, like Buddha says, the, path, yeah. it's, the, the way is the middle path. Mm -hmm. And I find that very beautiful. Like there has to be yeah. a balance to your life. I, I say it with a footnote to today's mm -hmm. generation mm -hmm. and especially young people and, yeah. and young adults and children. Mm -hmm. We can always pull you back. Yeah, It's harder to push somebody forward, I feel like. Mm. Especially when mm -hmm. in terms of attacking your goals yeah. or, 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 or going for it. You know what? I think that's a contextual thing. Um, okay. Because I think that, and I'm, I'm spitballing here because I haven't had this, I haven't thought this one through before. Um, I think that might be a very useful contextual uh, conclusion to have in a highly developed, comfortable society where the temptation is to sit back and be comfortable with what you have. Like, that's possible here. Whereas, for instance, if we go back, let's say, a couple of generations mm. to my mom's first generation out of the village in Zimbabwe, right? Right. Where you don't have the option to sit down. You sit at home, you die. That's how that works. Which means you get up and you do shit. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah. So if you're living, you're already making an effort. And so the lessons, I think, contextually will be different there. Whereas here, it's very easy to live um, and squander that living because you will still live. You know, there are yes. so many comfort systems in place. Um, and of course, I'm talking about, you know, a very middle class existence. Of course, there are people who suffer um, and don't have that option in the society as well. I get that. Yeah. But do you see what I mean? I think those specific lessons of it's easier to push than to pull back or easier to pull back than to push, um, I think we must never forget our contextual and that was the beauty of that uh, quote that you just read from uh, Extreme Ownership. Is that what it's called? Extreme Ownership, Extreme yes. Ownership, the, the, the Navy SEALs quote, is that what's missing so often from those motivational quotes you get from Feel Good Daily on Instagram or whatever the fuck these things are, is that they lack subtlety. They lack all of those be aggressive, but not overbearing. Do you see what I mean? That yes. but not overbearing is the only thing that legitimizes the be aggressive to me. 
And I think that that lack of subtlety is so dangerous because you will see the inspir inspirational quote that would be, let's say, the 20 on the left-hand column of that qu quote without the 20 on the other side. And right. that doesn't have the balance that you were saying the Buddha is talking about. And that's so dangerous yeah. because that's what leads you to the extremes either side of either lethargy or being a complete sociopath that is destructive. Absolutely. And I just talked about this on Aaron Pruner's podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the, the biggest problem in this country right now, and I think in most places, is the extremist views, whether it be your extreme left or extreme right. Mm -hmm. Because the majority of people, especially in this country, all they want mm -hmm. is a good future for their children, to be mm -hmm. able to survive daily, to have a good uh, living wage at the bare minimum, yeah. uh, to have a good education, to not be in debt, to make sh to, to not be worried when something health-wise goes wrong and they yeah. go, should I go to the hospital or because I, I don't have enough money yeah. or should yeah. I just stay here and hope I don't die? But you see, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna confess a fear to you here, right? When you yeah. pulled that book out and you said it was written by a Navy SEAL and you're about to give me an inspirational quote, I was terrified terrified yeah. because what I was talking about what scares me about where you glorify um, a certain type of blinkered determination um, often it's in that kind of it's it's war zone ment mentality where you kind of have to cut off everything and think just in a very straight line to the exclusion of all other things um, and so it was incredibly refreshing that it was so subtle and so nuanced then uh, you know can I, mean? I yeah can please I, that's bad war zone mentality yes then. exactly because exactly <laughs> real true uh, strategists, uh, you look at the art of war. There's mm. balance in that one. Too. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you look at this book, there's balance in this book too. And I've found in my life and performance wise, you mm. have to have that balance because you have to know your lines, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to make them seem like it's not, it's the first time you're saying that. Yeah, so but that's not true. Them. I'm going to pretend not to know them, <laughs> but I'm going to know them. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a, a something very beautiful about the journey you take too, and Absolutely. finding that I mean, balance. We're, we're, we're running around the same thing. We're talking about balance. Balance is essential, and it's very hard to to achieve. Um, but I also think, and this is where I'm going to link it into kind of a wider cultural thing and what we do. This is why I think culture is important um, because I I like playing bad guys a lot. I find them a lot more interesting than good guys. I don't like giving easy moral lessons, I don't, didactic lessons. I don't like saying, here's the guy, copy him, do this. I think um, linking into that Buddha quote you gave, the way is the middle way, the path is the middle way. I think you can only identify the middle path for that to actually be a healthy quote as opposed to a horrific compromise. Um, you can only identify the middle way by knowing what the extremes are. You have to know them, have explored them, understand them in order to reject them. That's, uh, I don't know, that's a very personal philosophy. And so I think it's important for uh, culture, academia, everything to go to those scary, shadowy, extreme places in order to understand them, identify them and reject them, if that makes any sense. Yes. And that's something that's being attacked right now. Yes, absolutely. Is freedom of speech and being able to discuss these kind of things. Yes. Um, but then the other side of that is that it must be done with responsibility. You can't simply say things for the sake of exercising your right of freedom of speech. Uh, right. It's the old, my right to swing my arm ends where your face begins. The, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that, yeah, obviously, yeah, that's the other extreme um, of it. Uh, but uh, you got to have d discussions about this kind of stuff. And whenever, uh, this is a really touchy subject for some people. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, I want a, a respectful, open dialogue. Mm -hmm. And. The, the Jordan Peterson, have you do you know him him? I don't. Okay. Mm. He got in trouble in his I forget the college, it's up somewhere in North Oregon or Washington because people the students were saying that the way he was speaking mm -hmm. was microaggression and it was creating I think I did read about this. Go yeah. On. Yeah. He got fired. Mm. He got let go. And he was basically trying to create an open dialogue mm. for this and again i'm not extreme right i'm not extreme left i'm not anything so if you're mm. listening to this thinking oh we sam doesn't like the left we sam's a uh, conservative or we sam's a liberal he or he's uh. a conservative or not a liberal uh, sh shut up i'm not any of that stuff okay he got fired and there's a video you can mm. search for it on youtube the students mob mentality are around him right mm -hmm. and he was basically like having his hands trying to yeah. talk with them like yeah. he had his hands up and then if you if you watch the YouTube uh, the video broadcast of this, you'll see where my hands are, and they're like, mm -hmm. "That's a microaggression. You're attacking us with the way you're waving your hands." And he's like, "Okay, I'll put them down." And they started laughing at him after he put his hands down. Yeah. 
What's that? It was in Washington. 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 Evergreen State College. Evergreen State College. Jordan Peterson. Check it out on YouTube. You can read all about him. And it's that type of extremism where, where it's like, wh- how, do you, how do you start a discourse with, with people like that? Um, I think that at this point you start getting into a different conversation about how you have discourse. Uh, because I've often seen examples like that uh, misused by people playing devil's advocate in order to be excused from doing damage. Um, and so whilst I don't know that situation particularly well, right. I think that if you find yourself in a discourse where you're making no progress, right. so this man, um, for whatever reason, is unable to communicate with these students. They feel attacked. Let's let's assume um, their truthfulness, their uh, straightforwardness. I can't right. think of the right word right now. Yeah, yeah, directness. Um, let's assume that they're, they're sincere. Let's assume their sincerity. Um, if they feel attacked by literally everything the man is doing, let's go that far again. I yes. don't know this specific situation. Yes, yes. Then to me, the only solution to that conversation is not to have it. At this point, the man does have to back down because if they feel attacked and you can't mm. talk, then you can't talk. And the loss there is on both sides because it means the students don't get the conversation. If they don't want it, you can't force it on them. Um, and at that point, that's, that's if you think the conversation has to happen, that's their loss. If it doesn't have to happen, then they've safeguarded their security. Either way, the minute that that two-way consensual dialogue has stopped happening, you have to stop it. If you insist on pushing the conversation forward, all that serves is your pride and your ego. Because you think, no, no, you need to receive this and I will force it down your throat whether you like it or not. And whether or not you're right becomes irrelevant at that point. Mm. You don't get to force it on me. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Absolutely. I think it's very important to, to, to at least risk. start a fight against yes. that. Is to uh, you have to educate yourself. You have to be okay with what oh, you're absolutely. saying. Absolutely. But then you, the, the, you, both sides need to educate themselves better because the students need to learn how to have that dialogue, and he needs to learn how to have that dialogue. Absolutely. What you said before too. There was a there was a term you used. You have to go to those dark places where mm. it's like yes. uncomfortable to read about. Yes. Uh, but you or, and particularly in a conversation between let's just say two people, there must be consent to go there. Right. You, I don't get to force that dark place on you. That's another thing. Why do people want to insist on forcing their views on you? That's something. Yeah, and I think that's an insecurity thing. Like I said, I think that's a pride thing. So let's assume yeah. again that our man in this example is absolutely in the right. Let's just assume that for yes, the sake okay. of argument for the moment. I still don't think he gets to force that conversation on these guys. I don't think it was a conversation of forcing. No, but that's what I yeah. mean. As in like, if they're saying stop, you got to stop. That's their loss, even if you're right. It's their, the conversation but then is their the issue, the issue he was having, yeah. it's freedom of speech. I think I think yeah, uh, but there's students mind, in a class. Sorry, right? would you mind looking up uh, what the exact uh, problem they had with him? Because I think it, he was he was I, I, if I'm not mistaken, he was refusing to use certain pronouns. Non- non-binary pronouns. What's that? Non-binary pronouns. Such as Z H E and Z I R. Right. So uh, that, Z-Z-Z-Z-Z. that's that's the issue. He was refusing yeah. to use those. In, in the way he was addressing them. Mm-hmm. And um, his whole thing was uh, freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. Of, I, you know what I mean? Like, that's, like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I haven't, like, mm-hmm. met you. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. just going to use he, he, you or he or yeah, she. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And so they're like, because you're refusing that, mm-hmm. We ha- that's a microaggression. See, at this point, I'm afraid I think I'm on the student side. Because, really? Because um, it's fine for him to be ignorant of someone's needs or philosophy. Right. But the moment someone asks you to care for them in a certain way, you have to listen. Mm. So if something that is completely reasonable to you, um, let's say mm. you say hey when I walk in, right? Right, right, right. And I come from the planet Zog, where the word hey is the most hateful slur. It has a 500-year history of oppression for my people. Right. That's got nothing to do with you. It's got nothing to do with your knowledge of that situation. You are not guilty of doing anything wrong when you say it the first time. When I say hey, when you, when I say, when you say hey, that really hurts me. Right. If you go, well, on my planet, that doesn't mean shit, so I'm going to keep saying it. Makes you a dick. Yeah. So, could you, sorry, could you uh, read, the, read the full description of that? Uh, sure. Because I know I'm missing some important detail out yeah, of this. Yeah. Um, yes, you have to respect people in terms of yeah. the way they want to be addressed. I, I agree with you on that sense. Um, Evergreen State College Biology Professor Brett Weinstein, surprised, indignant, alarmed. Um, 
he now faces a Jane Doe lawsuit from a former Northwestern student, uh, Kipnis, called uh, Nola Hartley in her book, Unwanted Advances. Weinstein has also has some kinship with Jordan Peterson, the social democratic professor at the University of Toronto, mm-hmm. who has been mobbed by protesters for his objections to proposed legislation that would require faculty members to use non-binary pronouns such as Z and Zir, I think was the yeah. pronunciation. Yeah. Um, all left of center faculty members who are or were at peace with the progressive agenda, blah, 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 blah. So, I mean. That's so interesting. Mm. This is different from what I've read in the beginning. Now, see, I need to do more research on this. And there's the thing. Such the, the nuance is the key to all of this, you know? See, this is so interesting to me. And this is a problem that I, f- I don't know if you face this. You'll read mm. one article. It says one thing. You'll read another article. They just say something Which slightly different. Which circles us right back to where we started at the beginning because that's mm-hmm. in the question of education because in the world that we live in now where you have an information, uh, a, a more information than we've ever had access to yeah. before, you need to educate mm-hmm. yourself on how to process that information. That's a skill that we're all learning right now, literally right now in the world today. Everyone is learning how to process the way we speak to each other. That's a new thing. And that's super important. I think that should be Very one of our number one cultural priorities is teaching ourselves how to do that. Yes. But then it's like, how do you find the really out what's going on then in that situation? Yeah, but then we start getting into a phil- Whoop. Oh, oh my God, <laughs> he's dead. Then we get Reagan into a philical, th- philosophical conversation. I just hit myself in the face because that happens sometimes. Um, and it's a philosophical conversation about the nature of truth and objective truth and whether objective truth even exists. Yeah. And so I think to avoid that, um, I, li- I prefer to focus on simply progress, how people are able to have dialogue. Right, right, right. Because then you don't need truth necessarily, not objective truth. You need to be able to negotiate with each other to look after each other to exist. And through that, you can then start moving towards truth together. <laughs> but but you said there's no objective truth. I said there may or may not be. Oh, there may or very, may not be. That's a very, very big philosophical oh, okay. argument. We could be here for days on that one. Okay. <laughs> but you, I, so you don't think there is uh, like universal truths? I think that there may be. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't be so bold as to lay that out because I know people far more intelligent than myself who could argue point blank against there being such a thing really? as universal truth. There's certainly perspective. There's certainly agreement. There is zeitgeist. Universal truth is a trickier one. Um, and again, it depends on how deep you want to go with this. But yeah. if you start getting to like string theory or whatever, there is no one single individual thing. Do you see what I mean? Right. Um, but yes, in the simplest sense, of course, there are universal truths. Um, but how... I think the universal truths, to a certain degree, are more what we agree on than we'd like to admit. Let's take this for example. Mm -hmm. uh, Unprovoked murder of Mm -hmm. someone else, randomly. I think that's uh, like... Yeah, but you want to get deep enough? We could spend days debating what unprovoked means. Randomized murder. Uh, you had to believe in the concept of randomness for that to be a thing. Right. Um, you, you know, Sherlock Holmes says there's no such thing as coincidence um, because all things are linked in a certain right. way. Okay. And so if you talk about randomized murder, if you talk about um, unprovoked murder, there's things like, uh, I can't remember who said the quote, the whole kind of to be, ins- to be maladjusted to a world that is insane is not insanity, that is sanity. And so you could say that, to, in a wider sense, society has provoked this mind into murder, depending on the context. Uh, there's, so, there's always a provocation in one way or another. That You could make the argument that someone who has committed unprovoked murder is clearly maladjusted to their society in some way, and therefore, depending on your viewpoint, has not been cared for in the correct way by said society, so that the way they express themselves is in this horrifically broken way. Mm. Which is not necessarily what I believe, but it's certainly right. an argument you can make. <laughs> that's the th- that's the th- that's the part that that I think when you say, well, it's not what I believe, but that's an argument you can make. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like then where is that person coming from with that with that statement? Well, the person who can because, make the argument. Yeah. Um, I don't know, and that's why we need to learn how to listen to each other. This the yeah. simple. All I'm trying to do there is not assume my rightness because it's a thought that popped through my head. That I know that there are thoughts out there that have never gone through my head that are just as valid as my own, and I may be correct, yeah. but so might they, which means I might be wrong. I don't think that enough people think when they speak, I might be wrong. I believe I'm right right now, but it is possible I am wrong. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. I think you know? a lot of people are like that. Uh, that's me thinking that, 
<laughs> is, is my bugbear in life when people believe that something is true simply because it came out of their mouths? Yeah, that's just stupid. It's it's infuriating. It's it's egotistical. It's selfish and it's dangerous. I think leaving yourself open to change. Yeah. And if like a new yes. piece yeah. of evidence comes up, like literally absolutely. just now, like absolutely b believe in things, but where? believe in it on a grounded because you looked it up and you did some kind of research and you can still change. Right. You know? Like literally right now, I'm questioning yeah. the Jordan Peterson thing because this article is different from something else yeah. I've read. I'm and like, we're figuring out what we can agree on. I'm like, do you see what I mean? Oh well, yeah, but. Again, I wish we could. We can't play a YouTube video, can we? I think you have to talk over it. Gotcha. <laughs> it's I it's an audio stupid, medium we send. I hate these stupid rules. Rules, that has. rules and regulations. Um, God damn it! <laughs> you know what? I you know what bugs me because don't I don't step on me. I remember watching the video. It's I don't like rudeness. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we've we've disagreed, right? Yeah, yeah. On, yeah. On, on on a little bit of issues, but I have respect for you. Yep. And I think that it has to go the same for a stranger. You know, mm -hmm. you gotta have to re respect them, especially if you disagree. Yeah, Otherwise, in the end. you start respect. getting you start getting like you feel like everything's personal, like it's a yeah. direct attack towards you, and then you have to like fight back, and then it's yeah. like we lose everything we could have gained. I'm gonna dispute it. that you have to fight back though, because. Or at least how on you the fight. circumstance. Because sometimes it is personal, you know. Yes, if you refuse but... to stop using a slur when you refer to me, that is personal. That becomes an attack upon me. And how I respond to uh, that is not necessarily to fight you. Right on the circumstance, of course, yes. of what the disagreement. If somebody's yeah. calling you the N word, of course, that's yeah. a very serious issue. That's a that's yeah. A, but again, you say of course. That's because we've all gone through various conversations to agree upon that. There, 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 there was a time not very long ago when that would not be of course. You know, a perfectly reasonable person would be sitting over there saying, no, it is not a slur. It's a biological fact. They've got smaller brains. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so the, the of course, is what I'm so terrified of. I, <laughs> I got a question for you then. Yeah. The way you, you see our world mm -hmm. going right now on mm -hmm. track, the way it's, it's going, yeah. do you think that we're heading towards a better place or not? That's a very big question, um, and I think because you're a citizen of the world, Reggae. Yeah, you've gone. You, let, let's for people who don't know, Zimbabwe. Uh, or, yeah, I, I grew up in Zim and then moved to the UK and spent my teen years there, and I've got family scattered, freaking everywhere. Right. Um, so yeah, that's it's a fair enough statement. I I like to see myself relatively go. There was a there was an article the other day that said Reggae Jean Page um, in our TV show that we're in for the people, 109C on ABC, um, is certainly not speaking in his, uh, what did they say, normal or usual British accent? Um, <laughs> anyone at home in the UK is listening to me talk right now is like, that ain't a British accent. I don't know what normal. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> British. I haven't used a British accent professionally in anything for at least four years. And so I'm not quite sure what they mean by normal at that point. I didn't actually take issue with it because they said some lovely things about me in the article as well. So, you know, they get a pass. But <laughs> um, the idea of trying to put people in these little boxes to make sure that you understand what they are, this labeling, um, is always a thing that bugs me. And so likewise, when you ask me if the world is going to a better place or a worse place, if we're moving in a good direction or a bad direction, um, I think those questions are dangerous because it all depends on what you want. Because good generally tends to be defined by getting what I want, getting what I believe in fulfilled. And so for some people, it's moving in a fantastic direction and in others less so. If we define goodness as overall happiness, I think that might have been the Plato's position. No, no. I'm talking about what you think, like you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know what you're doing here. I know what you're doing. And I love it. But you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hey, I ain't one of those journalists. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Right now you are. We're on a podcast, we Sam. Now we're having a casual conversation. We're having a casual conversation, conversation in front of 26,000 people on the record. And probably more this week. I'm sorry. I, I, I denigrated like, yeah, your yeah. show on the air. But my point being that this is the other thing about the contrivance with journalists that I don't like. Because, you know, the whole kind of casual conversation thing is a genre conversation, but it's not. Because, like I said, this is a public conversation. Yeah, it is public. This isn't actually you and me. This is you, me, and a whole bunch of other right. people who don't have the same active participation. Uh, no, absolutely not. You know? Then it would be too many people talking. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it's two of the, the most important people in the world talking right now. <laughs> Uh, Obvious. I'm, I'm just going to wave the irony flag there real quick before anyone shoots this man. We, <laughs> literally two of the most unimportant people. <laughs> <laughs> We're literal, actual actors in Hollywood I'm right so now. I'm so stupid. So yeah. incredibly unimportant. <laughs> I am so ignorant on so many things, but I love d- discussing things, and I love yeah. keeping my mind open, and and... We'll get. I'm gonna make you answer the question because I'm really curious. But man, I looped away from it like twice, three times. I know. But just in general, like, um, no. I was here's, so proud here's of why myself. I love ha- talking with you, Reggae. I know. Yeah. I know you're always honest with me. I know we're having a mm-hmm. quote unquote public conversation, yeah, yeah. but we're just talking right now. But like, I, you're always so honest with me, and that's something I appreciate, and that's a universal truth for me. I believe in honesty, um, but the reason that I hesitate to answer in definites generally is because I believe in honesty. Um, And I think that part of being able to be honest is leaving that room for uncertainty. Literally, I was about to say, you you know what I think? You know where I think the world is headed? I don't know. Yeah. I I honestly, I don't know. And that's why I wanted to get your opinion. And it seems like you don't know either. I don't know why people are so afraid of I I don't know as an answer. I don't know is a fantastic answer. It's so so conducive to progress. It's so conducive to positive questions. Positive to question to asking questions yeah. that will push that will expand our experience and our knowledge. I don't know is the most healthy place to be if you are engaged with it. I think people are scared of I don't know because it can sap your energy. It can feel like a defeat. People want to be the yes. guy that knows because then they feel empowered. You know, Wait, I'm trying to remember this this story. Like I imagine people like, for instance, current commander in chief would have a hard time saying I don't know about stuff. Yeah, you know that type most of need would. to show and display power is afraid of. I don't know. I think in this book, extreme ownership, it talks about if you don't know something, say you don't know. Mm. Literally, that's yeah. one of the things. Especially if your boss is telling you something, like, "Hey, mm-hmm. I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know. Can you teach me?" You know, not just yeah. saying, yeah, "I don't yeah. know." <laughs> you know, yeah. what I mean? you got to be like, "Hey, um, I don't know. It's my right not to know." You know what? Know. I didn't learn this, yeah. but I'm willing to learn. Uh, is there someone who can teach me, or is there somewhere yeah, I can go absolutely. to learn about this? Being proactive again, aggressive with yeah, yeah. finding a solution. Absolutely. Well, because I think I don't know often signifies incompetence, whereas I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but I need to learn or let's engage in this is actually competence. Admitting a gap in your knowledge and plugging it or engaging with it to me is competence. Because it's real. It's a truth. And if you're starting from a truth, you're able to build from that. If you're starting from something that's false, it's hard to build anything on top of that. Yeah. And the answer, quite frankly, to most questions, at least (laughs) somewhere is I don't know. (laughs) Uh, One of the reasons why I like to do so many like uh, new activities or new hobbies is because, especially ones where I'm not good at, is Mm because I feel like a white belt. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm yeah. not good at it. Yeah. I was just talking about the last podcast with Britt. I started, uh, I've only done it once so far just with scheduling, but um, S2. S2, yeah, 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 yeah. sound, sound uh, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the people. I know, I know, I know S2. S2's a dude. What's up, S2? What's up? <laughs> he's, uh, he's, you know, he's been generous to teach me how mm-hmm. to surf. So I've Have been you getting, seen S2 with surfer hair, by the way? Surfer hair? Ask him about it. But he's bald. Ask him about it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ask him. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've been, you know, I went out in the ocean with him, and uh-huh. I'm not comfortable in the ocean. Mm-hmm. I can swim, but swimming with waves coming at you. Yeah. Did I grow up in a landlocked nah. country? Water, not my home nah. element. Sc- hey, hey, waves, yeah. scariest thing, <laughs> scariest thing, and. Just, just you know, little bits of an unstoppable force of incomprehensible power and vastness. It's the, the waves no, it's we were fine. dealing Whatever. with were small, but yeah. they were powerful still. Yeah. And when you deal with something like that's consistent, mm. you realize, ah, I'm not that strong. <laughs> I'm not that big in this world. Yeah. Except, and here's what makes humans so beautifully powerful and strong, is that once you adjust the definition of strong from the simply being what you've got muscle-wise to the fact that we're really freaking smart as a species, right? And so you try to fight water, you don't beat it. Bruce Lee had this one worked right. out. Beautiful. Right. However, you learn how to judo water, essentially learn how to manipulate it and get it under your surfboard and balance on it. That's how you become stronger than the wave. Right. There is no way you will ever be physically stronger than the ocean. Not a thing that's going to happen. But take a more wholesome approach and I would say that surfing is being stronger than the ocean yes see what I mean uh, I used to have this saying in my mind 
to remind myself you're small but not insignificant. There you go. Yeah. You know? And I think that applies to everybody. And there's that, again, balance yeah. to that. Dude, balance <laughs> is the freaking theme <laughs> of this freaking podcast. <laughs> um, it was one of the images I really liked, and I saw a wrinkle in time yesterday. Um, and they go to this guy called the happy medium. Um, play on words, he is a medium, he is happy, he is the happy medium, mm-hmm. and his entire do- domain is made up of these balancing beams, yep. like this con- like, like seesaw-type platforms. And so throughout the entire thing, you have to balance yourself while you're in the happy medium's domain. And I just thought that was a really cool piece of imagery. Wow. I haven't seen that. I have a friend who was in it, and he mm-hmm. was uh, one of the acting coaches as well. Oh, cool. Uh, for the uh, one of the young actors on there. I really want to read the book. The material is incredible as far as i can tell and i have some friends who it's very very close to their heart so i'm i really want to read it i ah, man i need to start either renting out a whole theater to myself or just biting the bullet again and just going to the theater because the yeah. last time i went i get distracted really easily and oh, never ah. would have guessed we sam Keish. uh man i'm like a squirrel yeah <laughs> yeah squirrel squirrel uh, like uh yeah and uh, people were eating like they brought in with them whole like big bags of chips Mm -hmm. and eating during a scary Mm -hmm. movie yep and the sound drove me yeah crazy dude just go to the theater like first thing in the morning that's what i do yeah like if i want to watch and enjoy a movie i go to the first showing of the day no one gets up that early except other weird obsessive people like us and they're all there to watch the movie it's great oh five more minutes okay cool uh that's just some technical stuff if you're listening, <laughs> don't, no, don't cut They're it out, Michael. Here. It's staying in. Okay. <laughs> Let's go again. And I, I just want to say. I don't this... want to take a walk. <laughs> um, we're redoing mm-hmm. a little bit our back wall, and uh, I'm starting to like it. It's coming together very beautiful here at Adobe. Uh-huh. I feel I'm... like there's a pitch coming on here. Uh, you're going to there... ask me to do something. There is no pitch. No. I'm just talking. Why aren't you going to ask me to do something? Ray. Am I not good enough? Am I not good enough for the wall? Oh, boy. So insecure. <laughs> I was getting prepped. Uh, no, I just think it's cool. Like I'm looking at this wall. I really yeah. like the map that they got us and the, the bunch of pictures mm. is looking really good. It's coming together. It good, is. Michael. I was actually genuinely really impressed when I came in here. Like it's, it, it looks great. Yeah. I felt like I was walking into Wee Sam's world. Uh, can we, this is just popping in my head. Mm. I'd like to talk about something. Do it. Mortal. <laughs> Mortal engines. Engines. Hey, how about the craziest trailer I've seen in a while? Have you seen that? Yeah. Hey, man. It's insane. Oh, uh, I like it. What's going on? If I knew, I'd tell you. <laughs> um, so the best description of Mortal Engines purely from that trailer that I saw, like we dropped that trailer and I saw someone on Twitter say that it looked like Howl's Moving Castle set in the Mad Max universe. And you know what? That's not far off. <laughs> no, that's actually a great description. As, as re- I'm, I, I will run with that all day long because that's. I want to see that movie. I desperately want to see that movie. I I was just like, what I loved was the trailer made me want to go see it. Sorry, we than... should mention that I'm in this movie. Oh, uh, yeah. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Go, Sorry. Go see you that movie. Captain Col- uh, uh, Well, uh, no one no. ever actually officially announced who I'm playing. Someone said something on the internet, which I can neither confirm nor deny. Oh, um, oh, 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 gotcha. I saw, <laughs> it's on IMDb, by the way, just so you know. Yeah, but IMDb is like Wikipedia. Literally anyone can put stuff on there. Oh, boy. That's, that's the little warning that I'm going to give you on that one. So I can tell you I'm in the movie. What I do in the movie beyond that, yeah. Um, that was my inner gremlin came out, apparently. That, I've never that, made that noise before. Th- that, I, I like the trailer. Yeah. Like I said, because it makes me want to go see the movie. Yeah. Because I've watched trailers, man, where... Hey, thanks for giving me the whole movie. Yeah. Not seeing yep. it now. Yeah. No, no, no. You want something that whets your appetite. You don't want the whole freaking meal just as kind of a weird, reduced, uh, not as good version. She, uh, she was in, uh, she's in, excuse me, uh, Empire. And she has a movie coming out. She's the lead Who's she? female what? actress. Oh, in, in Mortal Engines? No, 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 no. Sorry. Uh, this is uh, on the tra- uh, subject of tra- trailers. Uh-huh. Uh, um, yes. Taraj. Roger P. Hansen. P. Hansen. Uh-huh. You know her, right? Yeah, but I don't know her personally. Yeah. <laughs> we don't we don't all hang out, we Sam. <laughs> she has a trailer for this She's... movie where she plays like a like a uh, a broken hearted girl, like uh-huh. an ex. Yeah. Oh boy. That made me like like I got 
I was like, oh my gosh, this this mm-hmm. is the type of movie you can only see once. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's it looks so good, but so like gut wrenching and like scary. It's like you? a thriller. You've broken some hearts, we Sam. Me Are you carrying some guilt that's gonna haunt you in the in the form of Taraji P Henson. Uh, no comment, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> um, um, and so, uh, yeah, man, I am. I love good trailers and. Your trailer was really cool because if you guys watch it on YouTube, what I thought was like the capital mm. of like the DC Capitol building is mm-hmm. actually the Vatican on top of there. No, 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 no. no? Again, it's St. Paul's. St. Paul's. Paul's Cathedral from London is what oh you saw. Oh my gosh. Um, it kind of so, looks like the Vatican though. Yeah. I mean, I enjoy the trailer once knowing nothing. Like pause this now, go watch the trailer and then come back. Yes. Um, so what you're actually seeing is the city of London on massive wheels. Like the entire city um, is chasing down another small town on wheels and at the end of the trailer it eats it that's that's what's happening like literally the entire city of london is a massive machine that is so hungry that it eats other smaller cities wow (laughs) that's insanely awesome it yeah it i sincerely when does it come out believe so uh december this year december 2018 So this Christmas, oh um, I am in a movie, an action movie, a sci-fi movie, kind of. And you've it's you've had such a. I, I I watched your IMDb. Watched it. I looked at your IMDb, uh-huh. and <laughs> you gazed upon it. I gazed it. <laughs> I gazed upon it. I judged it. <laughs> That's what it's there for. Is this great big judgment altar? <laughs> uh, you've gotten to work on some great projects. Um, I've been very lucky. I've been very lucky. I've been out of drama school for 2013, five years now. Um, and I've been incredibly fortunate. And everyone says this, I'm so fortunate and so blessed. Um, but this doesn't really happen without some fortune coming your way. Like, yes, I've, I have I give myself credit for grasping opportunities that come my way. But like, I've ended up on stage at the Globe um, fairly quickly out of school, um, on stage at a place... Uh, um, doing a, pl- a play called The History Boys in Sheffield, which was my first job before I left school, which was a massive honor with a wonderful director who's now owning the entire... He had like five plays on simultaneously in London last year. Michael Longhurst, absolute don of a man. Whoa. Um, simultaneously? Yeah. Like he literally... It was either it was somewhere between three and five. I think at one point it was something stupid like five, all running in different theaters just because he's that in demand and that good. Wow. And he's the guy who gave me my first break um, in this industry out of school. Um, which is wonderful. And so I kind of, I, I got to work with him. I, I have ended up on stage at the Globe. I then, after that job, came over here and did Roots, which is one of the most important and massively huge pieces of iconic cultural history in the American canon. Right. Um, the American canon, because I'm a comic book geek. It's all canon. Um but that was the most ridiculously intimidating honor of my life. Yeah. Um, and also the part of a lifetime. And I'm like, this kid out of drama school had no idea what he was doing. Um, and suddenly, <laughs> I had to not only pretend to be American, I always knew that was going to happen, um, but I had to do it with the stakes so insanely high of representing one of the most important pieces of American cultural history. Um, and so we got through that. And that was an honor and a privilege and a wonderful learning experience. Um, and then you have choices to make. And what was really interesting off the back of that is, uh, as we all know, Hollywood has interesting habits. Um, And for the next couple of years, I had to be very careful about what image I wanted to show people because I spent a lot of time reading scripts after Roots. Roots kind of introduced me to the Americans and I built a team and, you know, you start talking to people and start saying, well, what do you want to do next? So a few people know your face. Um, And I got to the point where I got so comfortable reading scripts and every second page being called boy or being referred to by all manner of slurs, not just the M word. Right. Um, to the point where I didn't notice it. Like that felt like home. I'd read contemporary scripts that didn't happen. And A, they were the exception. And B, they felt unfamiliar. And then I'd go back to something in the 50s where I'm getting beaten up on page five and that would feel like home. And that is actually really quite traumatic. Um, and I didn't necessarily want to put my audience through that. Um, I think, uh, (laughs) looping back around to promo, um, Leonard in this show that we're doing right now was important for me because I didn't want to turn up uh, in shackles again, figuratively or literally. Um, I didn't want that just to be the next thing I did for two reasons. One, I didn't want to put that image out twice in a row. And believe me, there were opportunities. 
Um, and two, I didn't want to go through that twice in a row. I'm literally just recovering from that. Um, and so I've been very, very lucky. And I think I've also been lucky in certain challenges I faced because I've learned a lot simply from uh, having to negotiate those. Um, and so it's a privilege to be doing what we're doing now, working with such wonderful people as yourself, um, but also dealing with very sophisticated material, dealing with material that uh, does not define you by these kind of very odd little historical boxes that the culture has put us in, but also does not ignore them. You know, um, we're about to, uh, I know that we do some very, very interesting exploring of Jay's history and his cultural context on the show, but absolutely, I don't think anyone who watched the pilot would say that, oh, Jay is the character who's defined, Jay's the one from here, or Jay's the character who's defined no. by this certain, do you see what I mean? Yeah, that's and what I love about it as well. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to So that's a genuine privilege. Yeah. You know, and that's um, one of the reasons that I waited so long before uh, I took on another project here in the States. Because um, I've been, this is the first time I've been on US TV for two years now, I think, actually. Um, and it's because you kind of, sometimes there are things worth waiting for and things worth choosing and actively pursuing. Um, and it is cool that we're in a show that the more I've done, the more I've been able to invest in emotionally and intellectually. It's a show that has a real earnestness and heart to it that is earned because there's some substance at the heart of it. Yeah, it's entertaining, it's sexy, it's witty, it's contrived, but it's also worth watching and worth existing. Yes. Uh, and there is some value in that. There is, There can be value to culture. There can be value to pop culture. There can be value to what you feed into the mob mentality because you can't just kind of give up on the mob. We are the mob. You, you feed the mob. You talk. You, you grow the heart of the mob until we're not a mob, until we are a beautiful, speaking, growing, adaptable organism that looks after each other. You know, it's funny. There's an Instagram story mob and it's different for every yeah. single person because once you start liking certain pictures or certain mm -hmm. or following certain accounts yeah. your feed because of the algorithms yeah. the algorithm the almighty algorithm right it starts coming up more profiles like that mm -hmm. so if you follow positive things yeah. positive accounts come up if you're following just uh, twerking videos hey uh -huh. don't be surprised when all you get is twerking videos <laughs> Which is I, fine. I, I, I was about to say, I was saying the implication still. that that ain't positive. <laughs> <laughs> totally kidding. No, um, I. Um, but yeah, no, no, I get your point. I completely get your point, of course. I. I, I and that's where I say that we have responsibility for what we pump into the culture, you know? Yeah. Um, such a privilege doing this type of show, too. Um, in terms of the types of stories we're telling mm -hmm. as well, and just enlightening people on certain aspects of, of the struggles that people face whenever they're. Um, in trouble with the law mm -hmm. or they've been attacked by a certain group of people or attacked by a person or a, a government. Mm -hmm. And don't think and it don't happen. Governments attack people left, right and center. And it happens every day in your own, whatever, wherever you are listening to this, anywhere in the world, I guarantee you there are people your government is attacking. But there are also systems by which you can engage with that and adjust that and fight that. Yes. I think education is our most powerful weapon and that's why it frustrates me more than anything when i see government agencies mm -hmm. willfully removing funding for educational yeah. things yeah. because it's like oh you're you're literally putting those people in chains yeah. also without uh, sorry not pouring, literally but yeah. figuratively without stupid, without yeah. pouring on the, neg the negativity um wherever you listen to this I, I don't think this is negative are, what we're saying no no though. i'm also just going to just kind of balance that out with yeah. there are people your government is protecting because much as i'm uh, i i have bleeding kind of red left tendencies um i do also believe in agreeing on things and working together as a society which is what a government is and right. there are people your government protects there are there are ideals that your government stands up for that is also yes. true at the same time as knowing your government is doing bad things it's a bit like when you grow up and you realize your parents aren't perfect you know <laughs> And it's just like you start having to accept that your parents are human beings who do wonderful things, who raised you and gave you life, and also have done terrible things, and maybe you need to start scolding them for it. Right, and, <laughs> and your parents keep switching out every four years. <laughs> every two to four years, it's a new mom and dad. Oh, awesome. Oh, you're, you're going to be my daddy for four years? Ah, hi, bye. <laughs> Oh, the wishful thinking of four years. <clears throat> um, 
No, I told I totally It could be eight. Listen, man, I am so appreciative of America and all its wonderful opportunities mm-hmm. it's given myself, my family. Uh, I am an immigrant. My mom and dad are immigrants. My brothers were born here in this country. Mm-hmm. And it's given me such wonderful opportunities and I'm utilizing them to my full advantage. Because yeah. I know You absolutely are. I'll back you up on that one. Yeah. So I'm I I I am thankful for that aspect. Now Am I going to ignore the fact that America was built on the genocide of Native Americans and the, 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 mm-hmm. on, the, on the backs of slaves? On Columbus Day, maybe. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not going to ignore that. I'm sorry. That's what this country was based on. And, yeah. it, and, and that's, what it was, that's how it was founded. Yeah, so to, to ignore that completely is not only a disservice – Disservice is such a, a it is, but it, it, a, a, a soft word to no, use. But y'all, y'all are obsessed with service. I think it's a useful word to use. If you're going to thank someone for their service, then that service is in calling you on your shit and acknowledging what makes you great. And what makes you great is acknowledging your flaws and building from them. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to clarify. We're not... Uh, may, uh, hold on. Let me clarify just so yeah. people... Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I think people can mishear uh, mm. or misinterpret what, we, uh, what I just said. Um uh, it's shameful what happened to the Native Americans. Yes. And uh, look at what... And what, is. Oh, oh, my gosh. South Dakota, the pipeline. What, yeah, yeah. What like, they fought this, for. This is a history and a present. The uh, history defines your present, and that's absolutely. still something that goes on. And we try and ignore that in schools, though. They're trying to remove that history in schools here. Yeah. Oh, I'm aware. Uh, there was, I think it was last year, where I think it was the state of Texas tried to rebrand um, slaves as migrant workers in your history textbooks. Migrant workers. Migrant workers, my friend. How? Folks who chose to come here for a better life. <laughs> How shameful. How shameful. You just want to ignore all the, the bad things about history. And it's in the back of mind, I'm like, what agenda do you have? Or are you so ignorant and stupid? Yeah, but Which see, one is that's it? Where we or come, both? But that's where you come back to education because I think often the agenda is behind is about keeping people ignorant enough to serve your agenda without knowing that they are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that comes back to learning how to uh, consume your information, learning how to form your opinions, can, learning how to change your opinions, all can, of this beautiful stuff. Can we, can we just, I mean, you've experienced it. And when I say this mm. question, I know you've, you, you've experienced it, especially in, on the acting front with, mm. with, with, with the roots. You know? Right, yeah. Can you imagine some, you're listening to this right now. Imagine somebody literally coming into your house going, hi, this is mine now. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, and I, you're I, gone. And if you say anything, we're going to kill you. Yeah, but you want to know the real, the real pain of colonialism, chattel slavery, whichever kind of brand of that that we want to talk about. The real pain of that for me, the real kind of piss take on that. And you guys don't have the phrase piss taking here. Mockery, I suppose. It's it's piss take in this room. It's here. (laughs) Um, But the real piss take of that one is what happened, particularly in this country, is it's not that you're gone. It was like the person came into your house and said, no, 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 you ain't gone. You're going to stay. You're going to stay and you are less than human now. You never mm-hmm. were human. I'm going to destroy your humanity inside and out. I'm going to beat it out of you, but you don't get to go. You're going to stay in this house and look at me every day. And I'm going to look at you every day and remind you every day of your lack of humanity. Ugh. And I'm going to make you bring me my shit and do my shit. I'm going to abuse your body, your soul, your mind daily and keep you around to watch it and keep your children around to watch it. And I'm going to re-educate every single part of you, your body, your culture, your mind every single day. And I'm going to keep you this close to me and watch while I do it. That is the real cruelty and violence of it. Not the physical beings, not you're out of here, not, and this is mine now. That's theft. It's the abuse that did it. See what I'm saying? Because th- that's what we're still recovering from. Right. Do you think the people who, who would do that, especially at the, at the time, mm-hmm. do you think they truly believed they were subhuman? Do you know what I mean? I because we're debating two separate things. Sorry, what? Just interject. I think you're uh, debating I, two separate things. I don't know what. Are you saying that the person who comes into your, into your house and says, get out, truly believes that the person in the house is subhuman? Is that what you're asking? I think you're, oh. debating, you're debating Native Americans and you're debating slavery. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, I wasn't debating. Yeah, I was just saying, we're not imagining. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The analogy. Yeah, the analogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, know, yeah. I, knew, so I, I knew your analogy. Yes. No, I went no. specifically into American chattel slavery, yes. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I knew what he was talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. cool. Okay. Uh, no, no, it's all good. It's all good. Um, uh, the, the, the people who did this, because there's, mm-hmm. there's a saying, and I forget where it comes from, and mm-hmm. I don't know if it's true. I really mm-hmm. don't know. It says no one is truly 
evil. It's mm-hmm. just a lack of, it, it, they're just I- I- ignorance. I think. I, and I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I'm a big believer in compassion. Um, I'm a big believer in empathy. And that's largely why I do what we do, because I believe that culture and stories are incredibly important for that. Yeah. Um, and I believe, I don't necessarily believe in evil, but I do think that you can consciously choose to buy in to an ignorance and that there is a weight to that choice. Uh, very, very nicely put. A conscious decision to be ignorant. Yeah, I saw a really interesting um, discussion about 12 Years a Slave, right? That was saying that from a certain perspective, you know, you focus on Fassbender as the monster, right? Because he's evil and he's front footed and he's just kind of abusing everyone left, right, and center. Yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to remember. And yeah. from another perspective, the real monster in that movie is Cumberbatch because he knows. He is enlightened. He knows the evil that he perpetrates and he continues to do so. Do you see what I mean? Do you see the difference between those two monsters? Yeah. And I'm not going to put a pin in that point. I'm just going to kind of leave that one there. Yeah. No, that's, that's really sparked an interesting perspective. For me. It's, it's, it's uh, removed a little bit of the fog, if you will. Yeah. Because, man, this... Let's just take a step back real quick. Life. I'm sorry to those actors for using their names. They're characters, obviously. But you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, just taking a step back on everything. I am just amazed at... Sometimes when I'm uh, just thinking about stuff, the the levels of gray, the shades of gray mm-hmm. in this in in this world, in this life, like that's obviously a very black area, mm-hmm. very very like very like the the abuse and the making people subhuman mm-hmm. and, and doing all that, the, the, those horrendous acts like. And it's normalizing. It make, it's the normalizing yeah. of them that is, so, that is so cruel. So evil. And then you have... Because that's why the, your country is still recovering from that today. That's why people on my side of this country are still recovering from that in our souls and in our minds right. and in our culture. Um, I don't think that it's unfair to admit that. There's still a recovery happening. And you know what? Both sides of that are recovering from that. There's been huge damage done and it hasn't been addressed. Right. Um, and that that's... That's the damage. The damage is the normalization of it. The damage is then undoing what has been taught to you as normal and going, no, it's really not. It's really not. Yeah. And it needs to be, it needs to yeah. keep being said. But at the same time, those shades of gray, the reason they're important and the reason that self-examination is important is that ain't a, none of, ain't a one of us innocent in this world. If you want to go back to, you know, our religious philosophy, the whole kind of you know, let he without sin cast the first stone. Yeah. We buy palm oil every day, which uh, is a direct result of, I mean, if you want to trace it back to its source, then yeah, there'll be, oh there'll be God. Sorry. violence and ethnic cleansing at the back of that. So you can have your Nutella. You know what I mean? I almost tweeted this and <laughs> I just couldn't find the right wording, but I'll just say it on here. Yeah. Uh, OJ Simpson was saying, I don't think, <laughs> did you see this? Yes. Ah, yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. He said, "I don't think uh, Colin Kaepernick should have kneeled. I don't think it was a good idea for him yeah, to no, kneel." Yeah, he said attacking and, the flag was a bad idea. Yeah, and I, I'm like, "Hey, man, didn't you, okay? Didn't you mm. kidnap somebody? And weren't you weren't you tried for murder?" Thank you. Yeah, I, th- I mean, let, let. like, <laughs> hey, man, you're not allowed to talk for a while. <laughs> Let's just like, you can't. Where do I start with that? Am I going? Am I going crazy? I don't think you do. Sometimes it's you just... read things and you have to reread the article, just the headline, like five times. Like this has to be a typo. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, let's. There's there's the opposite it's side a very to the lost life. Man. Um, there's a beautiful side. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. And, um, one of the most beautiful things I love watching is to see somebody who's come from a background where they've normalized the the racism of a certain mm-hmm. group of people, and they're like, oh my god. What I've been doing has been wrong. Yeah, and they turn around, and I'm I'm, I'm getting emotional yeah. thinking about it because you see them, their eyes just they're like oh like they regret, and and they feel mm-hmm. sorry, and then it's like no no this is I'm I'm sorry this is what I did was wrong it was it was horrible and I, I want to change my life for the better and I, mm-hmm. I want to lead a better life and I want to stop other people from doing this. There is a beautiful freedom in confession um and 
rehabilitation. Um, I'm I'm only ever, I, I have a problem with apologies when they're for the person who apologizes as opposed to the person you're apologizing to. So I, I got into this with a friend of mine recently um, because oh, they weren't great yeah. at apologizing. Okay. Like they they said sorry a lot. But... Uh, Reggie, I said I'm sorry. <laughs> And, and, and we said we said was very good at saying sorry, um, but often it was l- let's call the person we said. <laughs> it really wasn't we said, um, but like there's a thing about when you apologize to shut down an argument, you apologize and it actually means shut up. It means <laughs> okay, fine, I'll stop doing the thing, stop ragging at me about it, and it doesn't. And I clarify that I said, you know what, when you apologize, say sorry, I hurt you. See if that changes how you feel about it. And they found that much harder to say because suddenly that was about the person you're apologizing to. And so that story you just told is, is very, very beautiful. Um, I just know there are going to be people on the other, other end of this somewhere giving it a bit of side eye because they're like, unless that person is actively stepping forward and not just feeling sorry for what they did, but owning up to it and doing everything in their human power to take yeah. back that pain, oh. that apology don't mean shit. You're 100% right. There's a great, uh, there's this book called The Tibetan Book of Living and Dying. It's by Singapore Renapoche, I believe. Mm. Singapore Anyway, in it, he talks about the story of a person. Uh, they, they talk about sin and when you've mm. done something really horrible. Mm. And one of the things was a uh, drunk driver. Mm. He murdered somebody because he was driving drunk. He got in a car crash. The other mm. person died. He's like, I can't take back what I did. Mm-hmm. I am truly sorry. Mm-hmm. So I can now, at the least I can do is go to talks and seminars and educate people on the dangers of drunk driving Mm. hoping that from this negative act Mm -hmm. i'm able to stop somebody else from driving drunk absolutely and so it's like that you're like oh my gosh like he devotes his life to that now and it will never balance the scales but you it it is appropriate and but who's to say hey we're not we're not the ones balancing the scales no no that'd be is it anubis who is who is it who has the feather and the versus the human heart i think it's anubis anubis that's it. Yes! Literary God, points that. to reggae Jean Page. I think Fuck he has yeah. the, the jackal head. Yeah, the jackal head yeah, think... and the feather um, who, that'll weigh against the, the weight of your heart. What they don't often say in that myth, by the way, is that it's a very specific feather. It's a, it's a feather from like this massive mythical creature that's very, very heavy. <laughs> Just so that you is have it? some hope. I thought it yes. was a, um, the, one of the crane birds in the Nile. Maybe. But, but I might be wrong. So, so may I. We, we need to look hey, this up. guess what? We both don't know right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, we need to do our research, but I'm pretty sure I read recently, and I was like, hang on. Go it's on. An o- it's an ostrich feather. Oh. Is it, is it from, you know, your everyday ostrich? And also, and here's what we were talking about earlier, the danger of this. You've checked, what, one source real quick? Yes. There we go. Yeah. Very, very dangerous. Especially if you're dealing with mythology and a story that's been passed down from loads and loads of different people orally by th- through thousands of yeah. years, you want to check at least like 10 sources before you kind of accumulate an average. <laughs> um, uh, but back to what you were saying. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think um, we're not here to talk about the uh, – we're not, we're not the ones weighing the scales. We're not no, judging absolutely him. not. But I that's think it's a stuff. great step. In mm. the, it's the step in the right direction. It's, hey, honestly, yeah. oh, it's absolutely. the only step Which to do. Which is why I said it's appropriate. It's, like sometimes it's what you, you can't, can do. You yeah. can't look at him for doing that, that guy, and go, yeah. you piece of shit. Do you know what I mean? You can't say that no. to him. Well, I mean, well, no, you can, and he's got to take it, but he also has got to continue uh, doing excuse what Excuse me. Yeah. You can't call him a piece of shit for trying to no, doing the no, seminar. No, no, That's the part no. yes. I'm talking about. Yes, yes. I'm talking about his actions afterwards. Yeah, you yeah. can't say, hey, how dare you go to schools and try to stop people from driving <laughs> drunk. <laughs> Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so it's no, like, yeah, okay, absolutely. No, no, I no, think no, that's yeah, the right yeah, decision. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I think at the end of the day, um, it's so important to respect other people. I think this yeah. is the biggest thing I've gotten this from is, our this conversation. This is all it is. It's respect. Respect. Um, you can't judge anybody because you're not perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm certainly not perfect. You're certainly not perfect. I'm a little bit more perfect than you, but that's just the way it is. It's not in the way that ways that count. Like, well, <sighs> I've, <laughs> All the places that I would go with that. It's, it's, just, it's just not appropriate. Reggae John? Is it John? Is it Jeans? Think Wyclef. <laughs> Think Wyclef, my friend. <laughs> um, no, man. This is, you know what? This has been such an interesting conversation. It's been I a hope- really heavy conversation. I'm it so has- sorry. I, I'm not sorry. Are you sorry? I'm not sorry. I just love to... I had such a good time with you. And mm. you're such a unique Thank person. You. I feel so comfortable talking about these things with you. 
Well, I mean, I think, thank you. Um, and the feeling's mutual. And I think that that's simply because, like you said, you have an inbuilt compassion and respect. And that's what I strive towards in myself. Because I think the only way you can have these conversations, people talk about having respectful debates on both sides and that giving you the right to say whatever the fuck you want, which simply isn't true because that's not what respect is. Respect is listening. Um, but if you have an inbuilt respect and compassion and a want, not only to change the other person, but to be changed, then you can talk about most things with mm. most people if that's on both sides. You know what? That's what I feel open to whenever we talk. Because um, we've had discussions before. Yeah. Um, I feel like uh, I'm able, uh, and this is going to be phrased in a weird way. I Do feel it. I've gained something in a positive sense after I've talked with you. Like almost food for the soul. Dude. Does that make sense? Yeah, but isn't that the goal? What's that? Isn't that the goal? Like that's that's the whole that's the whole thing to feed each other's souls, isn't yeah. it? Like that's literally that's that might be the closest I've come to the meaning of life right there. Yeah. That's why we're social creatures, so we can feed each other. If you're doing less than feeding the person you're talking to soul, then you're not doing it right. No. Just a little bit somehow, somewhere, even if it's telling a yeah. stupid joke, feed their soul, man. And I like being silly with you too. Yeah, because like, that feeds fun. my soul too. Yeah. You know, there's more than one food. Like when we make fun of each other, I love that. It's the best. Why? The best. Isn't that funny? You're good. You're 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 a good fun maker. It's a it's a skill that you have, we Sam. Yeah. I mean, if I knew you were gonna wear that shirt, I I would have probably canceled. That. Do you know what's terrifying? I don't even I know. I just remember what it is. What is it? I it says Hong Kong, I think. Oh. And then there's some writing, and I don't know what it says, and this might well be one of those tourist shirts where, like, it says, whomever so wears this is a total douchebag who doesn't check what ethnic writing means before he... Be it's not fucking ethnic writing, because if it's made in Hong Kong, then I'm the fucking ethnicity. That's not the point. Right. Point being that I, I don't know what it says, and I'm wearing it anyway like a douche. Hey, can we look this up real quick? No! What's Hell no! No, no, not your shirt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, what is eth... What I want to look up the definition of ethnic. I think, it, mm, I'm going to take a guess. I've always thought that it meant like the, the, a minority within a larger majority. Can you, like can you read that out loud? Because uh, it's a little too far away from me. Relating to a population subgroup within a larger or dominant national or cultural group with a common national or cultural tradition. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that everybody? Then? Uh, well, no, it's contextual because I would be ethnic within what is still a predominantly uh, Eurocentric United States. Right. Um, whereas if someone, if a white dude went to Uganda, they would be ethnic within what is a predominantly Afrocentric state. Exactly. So, so everybody. A, in, in context. The, in a circumstance. In a circumstance. It depends where you are. It literally, where you're standing depends if you're ethnic or not. Yeah, absolutely. That is such a weird thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm literally blown away by this. That, that never hit you before? Well, I didn't know the exact definition. Ah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? No, no, no. But just like that concept of like, this it, is, it literally depends on which side of the line you're right. on. Right. And that's why <laughs> I like looking up the exact yeah. meaning of words, especially yeah. when I read. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm looking up words every like, like I read incredibly paragraph. slowly for that reason. Incredibly uh, slowly. But I want to know what, what I'm reading sometimes. You yeah. Know? I hate when I've done that and I, I read a page. I'm like, what yeah. did I just read? What yep. did I yep. just read? Yep. 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 Where did I go? <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? What special room in my mind did I go to to avoid this page? Did my astral body just decide <laughs> to take a quick trip? Get bored with what I was reading? That's another problem with education. Yeah. Whenever we, they, they don't tell you that yeah. that's normal, it's okay, you just have to focus. Yeah. I thought there was something wrong with me. Oh, man. this I don't know what it is that makes people feel good by telling someone else there's something wrong with them. It's like, it somehow validates you. You're different to me, therefore whatever the different thing is, that's wrong. That feels like such an inbuilt human thing and it's so horrifically damaging. It, it breaks yeah. my heart, it does. Like we do it all over the place and it's literally just, it's, it's the old, the old um, it's not an Einstein, I'm sure it's not an Einstein quote, maybe it is, where he was saying that, you know, if, if something to do with monkeys and fish, where he's just like, if you tested a fish on like a monkey's test and it couldn't climb a tree, you'd say the fish was stupid. And if you test the monkey in water, it can't swim. It's about context of what your skills are. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. There's a really actual good version of that quote somewhere. Uh, random, but there's a mm. cool study they did on monkeys. Okay. Always a cool study on monkeys somewhere. <laughs> right. Because uh, monkeys are cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, by the way, I love watching like, uh, like nature shows mm. and like 
I love when there's like a group, like a family society of animals, especially mm. like great apes. It's yeah. really interesting seeing their dynamics mm. and being like, oh, like, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've done that before. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Are you my friend? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, the answer is maybe until I'm hungry. <laughs> right. right? Um, so they did a sound. Uh, I hope I get this test right. Mm -hmm. Um you might want to look this up, Michael. Monkey test three, three monkey test ladder. Y'all want to put a please on the end of that, we Sam? You might want to look this up, Michael, please. Michael, <laughs> I'm sorry. Was I, too, was I too direct with you? I was too passionate. It's five monkeys, actually. It's a five monkey test? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Michael. The amazing Michael. The amazing Michael, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Do you want me to read it? Yes, please. Here, no, I'll, I'll read it. I'll read it. So, uh, a group of uh, scientists placed five monkeys in a cage and in the middle a ladder with bananas on top. Every time a monkey went up the ladder, I know this do you know? One, what yeah. the, can I can yeah. I read it for the yeah, listeners? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, every time a monkey went up the ladder, the scientists soaked the rest of the monkeys with cold water. After a while, every time a monkey would start up the ladder, the others will pull it down and beat it up. Yeah, because they knew what it meant. And then the really interesting thing. Is that generate God? God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> After a time, no monkey would dare try climbing the ladder, no matter how great the temptation. The scientists then decided to replace one of the monkeys. The first thing the new monkey did was start to climb the ladder. Immediately, the others pulled him down and beat him up. After several ble beatings, the new monkey learned never to go up the ladder. And even though there was no evident reason not to, aside from the beatings. Mm -hmm. The second monkey was substituted and the same occurred. The first monkey participated in the beatings of the second monkey. The third monkey was uh, changed and the same repeated the yeah, fourth. Yeah. And so and by so the end of the story, the monkeys that had never, ever experienced right. the, the being spritzed with water were beating each other up for a consequence they knew nothing of. Yes. Which is fascinating. Can we just, Michael, please, sir, uh, may we please Snopes that just to make sure that we're talking about something true? Sure. Because um, I'd never checked What's this. What's Snopes? I'm sorry. Snopes? Yeah. Snopes no. is like this website on the internet that takes stories like this that become like commonly passed around and tells you whether or not they're real or whether someone made them up. It researches this stuff. Uh, that <laughs> is... Oh, wait. How do we know if Snopes is real? Ba, ba, ba. Can someone please matrix meme Snopes, this guy? Snopes, Snopes. What if I told you that Snopes needs a Snopes? What, <laughs> what if he presses enter and a black hole starts forming? <laughs> <laughs> we literally just passed into an alternate dimension. You broke the world. It wasn't um, the Large Hadron Collider that did it. It was Wee Sam talking about Snopes. Isn't that freaking amazing? But, but it it's, it's been proven, though, that your DNA retains memory, yes. too. Yeah. So that doesn't surprise me Because your me DNA gets altered through life, and you pass down altered DNA. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a very real thing. But I take very different things from that story sometimes, depending on what context I'm reading it in. Yeah. Because there's the obvious story of, but by now, like, all the monkeys that are in there that never went to the top of the ladder, like, they don't know, there's no reason not to go up there. This right. is so terrible. The society's pressuring them not into doing this thing un unnecessarily, like, violently. But then there's the other version of the story. Well, like, have you seen Get Out? Yes, the movie sorry. I, I, yeah. Sorry, leaping here really Yeah, quick. yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, so the scene near the beginning, right? Cop pulls them over and his girlfriend's all like, what the fuck, that's bullshit. Like that's literally what she says. She says, that's bullshit. When the guy's asking for his license, he's all just like, I'm just going to give him my license. She's like, no, that's bullshit. And you know, if you're sitting with, <laughs> with a group of black friends, they're all like, man, white people can consent say this is bullshit to a cop <laughs> on a country road miles away from everyone. And we simply cannot. Right. Like that's, that's the whole joke of that moment. Right. But... That's the type of thing where our black protagonist would have had that taught to him, having never experienced necessarily being beaten up by a cop on a country road before. But he'll have been told, for the love of God, if you are alone on a country road with a cop in America, somewhere out in the middle of God knows where, you don't say, no, that's bullshit, even if you are right to do so. You give him your damn license. He's never experienced the consequence, but that societal knowledge that he's received is very valid. Yeah, I, I, think, <laughs> I think what's... Uh, I, I, yes, I agree with you. But I think what's uh, I think what's the amazing part is that they didn't communicate that water would come down. It's just through the beatings. That's what. Oh yeah, and that's what I mean. And so okay. the mode of communication is uh, brutal and wrong. But a lot of the time, people extrapolate from that that the lesson is you should always try to climb the ladder to find out whether or not there's still water raining down in you. And actually, yeah. there is actually something. I, there's another. Both of these things are true. But there is a noble side to that story where the society is protecting itself badly. But it is protecting itself, and there is something quite generous and loving about that. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. <laughs>
Man. Because you could easily interpret that the, the monkey that wants to climb the ladder and get the bananas is being so goddamn selfish. Everyone's like, don't do that. Bad stuff happens. And he's all like, well, I want a banana. And it's just like, dude, listen to, you, to your ancestors. Listen to your elders. They're telling you bad stuff happens. Just because it ain't happened to you doesn't mean that you need to make this happen for all of us right now. So it was an actual experiment? Yes. It was? Um, Thank you very much. To the, like, it was. It, what? Sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry, uh, it's uh, G. R. Stephenson, a uh, specific cultural acquisition of a specific learned response among rhesus monkeys, 1966. Okay. All right. Excellent. I'm Dude, we are, now. we are on a tightrope, and I feel like we're, on a, we're hanging by a thread just as a – now that we've been talking about all this Sorry, stuff. Sorry, is this literally you and me or society? I'm, everything. Literally <laughs> everything. society, the world. Yeah. I just feel like we're – I don't know, a button away from total chaos. Well, literally. We're literally a button away. Actually, you know what? We might be a button away from total peace. Because the other thing, that you know, the wider don't thing. Don't say that. You give some people th- that. Oh, my gosh. I mean, yeah, if I, I, if I give into my extreme cynicism, yeah. the earth will be fine. We just won't. Dude, I, I don't know. Like, sometimes that. That's In fact, the earth will probably be better off. Well, yeah. <laughs> the earth would be, for sure. Yeah. Like, uh, she'd come back. We I don't. have stocks, Reggae. <laughs> Shut the hell up. No, I'm kidding. I'm well, kidding. buy stocks and renewable energy, <laughs> goddammit. Please. That's something that annoys the hell out of me. When what? somebody tries to, like, disagree with renewable, it's like, hey, man. <laughs> yeah, how, how greedy are you? How fucking greedy are you? By the way, mm-hmm. just so you remember, you can't take your money with you when you die. Yeah, but I can have it right now, and when I die, I don't care. Oh, such a such a negative outlook. It's it's not great, but this is why we need to get better at talking to each other. That's right. And it starts with us. And it starts with us. I disagree about your shirt. I disagree about my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> we both disagree about my shirt. Um, but it looks so cool. Um, it does look really cool. I like your shirt, man. Oh, it's, I, well, I, I think Frankenstein's monster meditating is a beautiful image. Right. Especially considering the disservice that Frankenstein's monster has been done by the culture. Um, because Frankenstein's monster is a super intelligent creature that's searching out his humanity, teaches himself to speak, and quotes philosophers at you the whole way through the novel. And he's literally created by the dead parts of other people from that society. Oh my god, how deep Ooh. are we right now? Ooh. We are not even hot. Could you imagine if we were high? Sorry. If we were high, this would be like so freaking. <laughs> uh, I've, I, you know, no fun thought. Go. Always. I've never been high. Never? never. Never once, not ever. Yep. How do you know that you haven't always been high? That's actually a philosophy argument. I think it's the one where, uh, how do you know you're not in a coma or your brain yeah, is actually, yeah, yeah you know or that I mean? we're not in a simulation run right, by right, a right, more right. intelligent society that uh, created us, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That argument, I'm just uh, for some reason, I- I'm all about discussion and discord. Uh, discord, uh, dis- I'm all about discussion and yeah. conversation. But whenever discourse. that discourse, arg- discourse, excuse me, yes. Uh, but whenever that uh, and uh, discord within discourse, right? Uh, whenever that uh, idea comes up, I'm always mm. like, yeah, uh, okay, whatever. Listen, <laughs> we're going to talk about real stuff right now. And they're like, yeah. well, what if the mi-? I'm like, yeah. ah, you're, uh, you're just, uh, no. Nah. I mean, there comes a point where it's just irrelevant. It's like, cool, fine, I'm a simulation. This is still my life. All right, mm. awesome. I'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah. Like, I, then I can't talk with you. That's yeah. what I feel like yeah. when that conversation yeah. gets put yeah. up. But I, would, I wouldn't mind having that conversation with somebody like Neil deGrasse. Tyson, Tyson. Yeah. yeah. See, I I'm terrified of these things because I have an older brother, right? And my older brother is smarter than me. Like this is a, don't ever let him hear this podcast. He's objectively smarter than me. We um, should have had his, him on. <laughs> and he's infuriating to argue with because the problem with folks who are really really smart is even when he's wrong, he can win the argument. Like he's really really good at how he uh, presents his facts and his arguments. And so he's the worst person in the world to argue with because even when he's wrong, he'll still win. I, I would love to talk with your brother now. Oh, man, he's, he's the worst. Where is he's he great. At? Um, God, where is he now? He's, in he's Germany, on the right phone, now. actually. Mike, my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Come on out. Like, can you imagine if he walked in here? I really can't, actually. I really... You're like, I hate everybody right? i just shut down I, it wouldn't be a tearful reunion moment i'd shut down i'd be really miserable i'd rock in the corner and you just you'd have broken my spirit entirely 
that's that's the healthy nature of my family <laughs> relationships. <laughs> um, reggae, dude. Yeah. Um, can you? Would you like to come back on? <laughs> At some point, have you had? I hope we haven't scared you off. I mean, I think the more pertinent question is whether anyone would like me to come back on. We've had such a heavy conversation for so it's long. It's gone. It's gone. I don't know so? whose souls we've crushed slowly through kidding? this water torture of a conversation. Ah, uh, I disagree, sir. But if anyone is into that, if that's your kink, I'm not going to kink shame you. I'll absolutely come back and do it again. Um, this has been one of my most fun conversations I've ever had on a podcast. Actually. I worry for you, but you're very welcome. What are you talking about, it's man? It's great for you're, me You're too. amazing and you don't give yourself enough credit, which is fine. You're being <laughs> humble and that's all, all good. Um, so I want to say it's an absolute pleasure to be on a show, uh, even though, wait, have we had scenes? I don't know. We haven't. No one knows. No it would one be knows. spoilers to reveal such right? a thing. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you on the show. And I Thank hope you. we get more scenes together. Yeah, me too. I genuinely do. I, also I because I just want to know what happens when we spend more time together because that... I, I gen There are people in the show where I kind of know how that character works and I know how this interaction will work. This interaction right here? Yeah. No, I, I got nothing. I, I you mean Leonard and Jay? Leonard and Jay, yeah. yeah. I, I, like, I don't know how either. Because I've heard <laughs> about you. Like, my character has yeah, heard about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But he's not the type of guy... Like, I when mean, that happens... Oh, you're not... Man. Hey, you're not worse than Kate Littlejohn. <laughs> Okay. Eh, eh. Worse is a very subjective. Uh, no, not for Jay. Not yeah, for that's Jay. Because Jay, at this point, one episode in, has not met me. Hey, uh, bro, have you we, met Leonard Knox, dude? Kate have you is, met Leonard Knox? Kate is the the arch nemesis <laughs> of Jay Simmons. Okay, Kate is that arch nemesis. If it's between, if it's like, hey, do you want to go against Kate or, or bro, Leonard? If Kate Littlejohn scares Kate. you at night. Just wait till you meet what scares Kate Littlejohn. I'm not saying you're not a good lawyer. I'm just saying it's very, it's a very yin yang relationship. What if we? How funny would it be? Mm -hmm. No, we wouldn't become friends. That wouldn't make sense. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I ship Jay and Leonard. So you what? hard. I ship Jay and Leonard. You ship? What ship? Oh, oh, you don't spend enough time on the internet. Jaynard. Oh man, <laughs> Jaynard. Jaynard is good. Or Lene. I'm sorry. Are you Lene. <laughs> English right now. I'm. I are you, am I having a stroke or are you guys having face. a stroke right it's now? so adorable. What are you talking about? Look at him. He's so lost. Shipping. That's UPS. No, <laughs> UPS no, came up. <laughs> Literally UPS came I up. I UPS landed in J. <laughs> Shipping refers to a, the phenomenon. A ship is the conceptual of a concept of a fictional couple. To ship a couple means to have an affinity for it in one way or another. A shipper or a fangirl boy... Is some I, my social media team is red in the face <laughs> laughing at me. Hey, I don't know what shipping means. I watch nature documentaries and Finding Bigfoot, and that's it. Leave me alone. Oh, you can find this, this is the clip right that's going here. on for this episode. This <sighs> is the clip. Can, can they hear us out there? Or yeah. Are they just laughing at your face? They can hear oh, us. Oh, there's like speakers. Oh, God. You know, it, it's weird. Like when you know that what you're saying is going to like an abstract audience is completely different to the response. When I know that they're right there listening to what we're saying, that's so. What the terrifying. hell is shipping? I still don't know. It basically means that I want us to be in a relationship. Like that's oh my, the character. My oh, yeah. gotcha. That would be an interesting relationship. It'd be amazing. It would be if you want unpredictable television. <laughs> <laughs> hey, probably not gonna happen. <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> I looked at Paul's notes and I, I, bet, I bet all the money I have that's not in there <laughs> okay. Okay, oh I'm my sorry. gosh guys um, uh, thanks for coming on man thank really you very much it. for having me uh, it's been a joy uh, it's been pain it's been laughter it's been tears it's been the full human experience hasn't it hasn't it it's been it a full, quite a bit, full experience um uh anything else you want to promote that's coming up other than um, for the people <laughs> tuesday nights 10 9 central and abc that we're on Woo! also on ctv in canada yes ctv canada um a friend of mine told me that you can watch it in new zealand but for some reason you can't watch it in the uk my peeps are getting shafted uh oh don't look up what shafted means americans um <laughs> they know <laughs> literally oh, they I thought know. that was one of ours oh well <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, anything else coming up for you, man? Um, no, no, no. This year, that I can speak of, it's it's all for the people. And then in December, Mortal Engines, the new Great. Peter Jackson produced sci-fi alternate world, huge, epic um, Check out the trailer, people. It's, Seriously, it's insane. I can't wait to see it. I genuinely cannot wait to see it. This, I did the worst promo for this movie in my life Uh-oh. because, like, you know, when you do EPKs, electronic, uh, yeah. what does that stand press for? Press kit, electronic press kits. Like you said, you know, when you watch interviews uh, for the sake of our listeners, um, and you see people with like their face next to a poster for the film, like yeah. that's like an EPK. I had the worst one in the world for Mortal Engines because I turned into a fourteen-year-old kid. I had so much fun on that set that they were like, "So, tell us about your favorite thing on Mortal." Except there was, I was in New Zealand, so, so tell us about your favorite thing in. in uh, I can't do it. That was South African. Tell us about your favorite thing in Mortal Engines, and I was like, "Oh my god, dude, dude!" I was like, "I was like, there was this robot, and we were." 10,000 feet in the sky and we were flying and it was just the best thing in the world and there was a grenade and there was a hole in the floor and then like you almost fall through the hole in the floor and then I didn't fall through the hole in the floor and just it was it was not cool like it was not cool but that's what it felt like to make that movie whoa yeah that sounds like an intense ride it was literally an intense there was a day when the director walked on set looked at it and went yeah I think put a hole in the floor tip the whole thing 50 degrees and give that man a grenade none of that was in the script and then we did that. Wow. The director <laughs> was... Uh, Christian Rivers directed Mortal Engines. Right. Um, but there's this beautiful kind of creative network around this, uh, the studio system that Peter Jackson's built out there. It's like walking into Wonderland. Yeah, I saw he was an art director on L- like, Lord of the Rings, right? Uh, Christian Rivers? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he has a beautiful story. Um, I think if I'm getting this right, he wrote to Peter Jackson um, like after like his first movie, after Bad Taste and said, hey, I'm a huge fan of your work. Um, I'm a storyboarder. I'd love to work with you and send him some examples. And people was like, yeah, cool. They worked together for 17 years after that, just off a fan letter. And this is Christian's, I think, first like big movie directing at the helm. Um, and so that's out of a 17-year relationship. He's an Oscar winner for animating King Kong. He's, he's been in animation um, and directing second unit. Um, and so like this is an Oscar winning director already, but kind of getting to fly and do this amazing, this film that's already blowing you away from the teaser. So, I mean, I don't need to hard sell that. I'm as excited as anyone else to see what on earth comes out of this insanely expansive imaginative world. Very interesting. I'm so excited for it, dude. It's me too. Me too. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming on. And, uh, we love you. I love you too. (laughs) We're out. Peace. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. It was such an amazing convo with Reggae. He's such an awesome guy. I just want to thank you all for listening. Uh, big thanks to Adobe Radio and Nice Guy Digital. Thank you, guys. Thank you to my awesome team, Michael, Tia, and Taylor. And... If you're listening to this and you love it, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes and, you know, show your support. Follow us on Twitter for all the latest episodes and Instagram for some behind the scenes goodies of our show. I seriously appreciate you guys listening. The show is for you. We've got such an awesome, awesome number of hits last show and uh, we got to keep it going because they want to keep it going. All right. Love you guys.